Hello, what's your PC Jack? While AMD is seemingly having a difficult time gaining traction with Ryzen 7 Thousand Series CPUs, Intel seems to have made an impressive leap over Alder Lake to Raptor Lake with their 13th gen CPUs. While I was already pretty impressed with the Core i5 12600K, I'm very excited to finally have my hands on my first Intel 13th gen CPU. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a close look at the Intel Core i7-13700KF, which I've been running in my personal system for a couple of weeks now. We'll be taking a look at power consumption, thermals, and most importantly, performance when it comes to gaming and productivity. If you're looking for the TLDR, I'll just come right out and say that Intel have made impressive leaps over 12th to 13th gen, and the 13700KF is no exception, and clearly shows a significant boost over single Friday performance from last gen even over Ryzen 7000 series CPUs as well. The 13700KF takes direct aim at the Ryzen 7 7700X, especially when it comes to value, which is not something we would have said from Intel over the past couple of years. Given that the 13700KF along with the rest of the 13th gen CPUs support both DDR5 and DDR4 memory, which is a huge bonus for saving on cost compared to Zen 4, but also you can install a 13th gen CPU on a 600 series motherboard like Z690 or B660, provided that you update the BIOS. Overall, 13th gen is just much better value overall, especially when it comes to its excellent performance. However, this is at the cost of power consumption, which seems to be a recurring theme among a lot of these new releases lately. While we'll get into it specifically for the 13700KF, this is especially prominent on the 13900K. I do feel there is some legroom for tuning, especially with some sort of undervolts that you could run on the 13700KF, but for today's video, we're going to be focusing exclusively on stock out-of-the-box performance. So, before we go into the test results, let's go over everything you need to know about the 13700KF and the specs for this CPU. The 13700KF is a 16-core, 24-thread CPU with 8 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. The CPU itself has a max turbo frequency of 5.4 GHz, 5.3 GHz on P cores, and 4.2 GHz on E cores. In terms of cache, we have 30 MB of Intel Smart Cache and 24 MB of L2 Cache. In terms of power, the 13700KF has a base power of 125 watts and a maximum turbo power of 253 watts. As indicated by the F in the name, the 13700KF does not include an iGPU, which can actually reduce the cost slightly. So if you are going to be pairing this CPU with a GPU and you know that for a fact, then you could go for the F version to save a little bit of money, but you do lose out on integrated graphics. So as I mentioned, I've been running this CPU in my main system for a couple of weeks now, and today I have finally taken the time to fully assess the performance of this CPU. Please though, based on my system specs, you may see even greater performance with a better GPU or even using DDR5, but the idea behind today's video is to give you a rough approximation of the performance that this CPU is getting in my configuration. So it should be still pretty indicative, especially with the configuration I've used in today's video. For today's testing, I've paired my 13700KF with the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Elite DDR4 motherboard on BIOS version F20. For memory, we're running 2x16GB Corsair Vengeance LPX3200 speed memory, which is the JDEX specification for DDR4 memory on this CPU. For our GPU, we have the RTX 3080000 edition and a Corsair RM850X PSU. The full specs, along with links to all the hardware used in today's video, can be found in the video description. Going into testing, it's important that you can use the results that I've got in today's video and extrapolate them and compare them against CPUs that you may be considering as well, in order to get a more well-rounded opinion on what CPU to go for. So, with all that out of the way, let's get into the results. First up, I thought we'd take a look at power consumption and thermals. Looking at peak power draw under a multi-core workload, the 13700KF pulls 243 watts, not an inconsequential amount given the stock limits we've set on our Z690 Aorus Elite motherboard. Looking at single core though, we can see our CPU only pulls around 40 watts, while under idle load we only pull 21 watts. Taking a look at our power draw during gaming however, taking an average peak power consumption across our 6 titles we've tested today, the 13700KF averaged 101 watts. So as previously mentioned, it appears Intel are pushing power as expected on their i7 and i9 CPUs, but how does this affect thermals? Under a full sustained multi-core workload, you'll find that the 13700KF demands a somewhat high-end cooling solution with an average temperature of 85 degrees C, which is acceptable, but we are using a Noctua NHU-12A, so it would be advisable to use something of a similar performance level to keep this CPU in check. A single core load, however, sees a much lower average at 38 degrees C, in addition to an average idle temperature of 26 C. 
Lastly for gaming, again over a 6 game average, the 13700KF sits around 51 degrees C. So if you are more concerned with gaming only on this CPU, you could potentially go for a lower end CPU cooler. Now let's move on to our benchmarks. Looking at our compute performance first. In Cinebench R23, our 13700KF hits a multi-core score of 30751 and a single core score of 2088. Running the Blender benchmark with a combined samples per minute for the Monster, Junk Shop and Classroom tests, we achieve a score of 444.47. Moving on to a handbrake transcode task. Transcoding a 6 minute 53 second 4K60 48 megabits per second file to 1080p using fast transcode, our 13700KF manages to complete this in 284 seconds. Finally, looking at the Adobe suite, running the Puget benchmark in Premiere Pro gives us a score of 846, while running the Puget benchmark in Photoshop gives us a score of 1373. Now, moving on to our gaming benchmarks. To ensure we are more CPU bound, I have run all 6 titles at 1080p with DLSS or FSR disabled where available, in addition to disabling any ray tracing options. Starting with Doom Eternal, our 13700KF maintains an average FPS of 302, 1% lows of 197 and 0.1% lows of 160. Next up with Cyberpunk 2077, we get an average of 88, 1% lows of 71 and 0.1% lows of 62. Running Horizon Zero Dawn, which still manages to be a fairly CPU intensive title, the 13700KF manages an impressive average of 162 FPS, 1% lows of 112 and 0.1% lows of 100. Moving on to one of our more demanding titles, Red Dead Redemption 2, our CPU averages 120 FPS, 1% lows of 85 and 0.1% lows of 58. Moving on to a tried and true classic for CPU testing, CSGO gives us an average FPS of 342, 1% lows of 140 and 0.1% lows of 92. Closing out our gaming benchmarks with our newest title, Spider-Man, the 13700KF averaged 187 FPS with 1% lows of 104 and 0.1% lows of 82. So looking at these results, while more CPU bound titles such as Spider-Man, CSGO and also Horizon Zero Dawn will see clear gains with a much more powerful CPU, there are certain titles while even at 1080p we are still slightly GPU bound still. Of course, this means the difference between CPUs can become a little bit negligible at times, but the single threaded performance is certainly going to help you quite a lot in that regard. However, when we become more CPU bound in video editing and encoding tasks, that's when we'll start to see those power spikes even more. Now, you could counter this with some undervolting, but of course, that will depend on how well binned your CPU is in the first place. Again, this can be a concern when it comes to cooling, but provided you're not putting the CPU through its paces, a uh, half decent mid-range cooler will be more than enough for the 13700KF. For more demanding use cases though, maybe consider a higher end option like the NHU12A or even the NHD15 or the Deepcool AK620, or potentially if you're looking for a liquid cooler, go for a 240 all the way up to a 360mm AIO. Closing things out though, the 13700KF has definitely made a significant improvement to my performance when it comes to gaming and productivity. Given the various advantages it has over the competition, most impressively when it comes to value, many people will be considering Intel as a viable alternative to Ryzen 7000 series. The 13700KF in particular is going to be a pretty compelling option given that it's competing so well in that middle ground between the more lower end of CPUs and the high end, more HGDT types of CPUs. So if you're looking to strike that balance between budget and performance, the 13700KF may be the right option for you. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord server. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PCJack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while helping to fund everything I do on the channel for you guys. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.